start the um, and so again, Racing Magpie is a Lakota centric arts and cultures organization founded in 2015. Um, and they center look, the Lakota practice of being a good relative in everything that one does. And our work is focused on elevating and amplifying the ongoing work of community based artists like Tiana here and also culture bearers from across Ochati Shakoin territory. So I'm really excited that. Tiana joined us for our winter camp programming and Tiana will be sharing some indigenous songwriting practices. And so the winter camp kind of format is our way of thinking about and thinking through what being a good relative is, reimagining um, the Lakota winter camp model of problem solving and community building in today's world and making these deeper cultural connections um, to our Lakota roots in the way that our ancestors did things and how us now in present day are connecting to the universe around us. Um, so, and these events are open to the public, um, but we specifically like to target Lakota community members, both as presenters and attendees. And as we think, right, with those of us who are in Ochati Shakoin territory, we got a big heavy snowfall this past um, weekend. And so thinking about like the way that plants and trees focus their energy and building strength in the ground, even during the cold weather, um, this winter camp programming is similar and growing from the roots. Um, so as our community joins us, we strengthen and grow together each year and sharing. Um, and we wanted to thank Bush, the Bush Foundation for their generous su support and sponsorship of this program. Um, and if you would like to make contributions, you can always um, follow Racing Magpie on social media platforms or donate. Um, and you can go to the website, um, racingmagpie.com. So, and if you have questions during the presentation, you can raise your hand, type them in the chat, um, direct message me, um, and we encourage you to participate along the way. Tiana will be giving some um, interactive prompts for us. Uh, and then I just would like to introduce Tiana. So she is a Lakota recording artist from Oglala, South Dakota, which is here on the Pine Ridge Reservation. She is a vocalist of many genres, but specializes in singing traditional Lakota and indigenous music. She travels throughout North America, to powers as a backup singer for drum groups, as well as perform solo for various audiences. Her vocal range reveals the pride of her identity as a Lakota woman. And Tiana will share it, pass it to you. Thank you, Clementine. Well, first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody and I will introduce myself in the Lakota language. <clears throat> Hoya Medakia B Chante Washte na Bet Uzapi Tiana Spotted Thunder Imachapi na Wakolia Tashiog Mukahuash de Mi Henye Oglala Emataha Namani Ruzaha Otuahek Dawa Tikshto. Hello relatives, my name's Tiana Spotted Thunder and my Lakota name is Pretty Voice Metal Larp Woman. I come from the Oglala Lakota people, and I currently reside in Rapid City, South Dakota in the Black Hills. So um, I would like to thank Racing Magpie for inviting me today. I am very honored to share some special things with you today. And uh, what I'm sharing with you is different song styles. So. I have uh, two albums out. One's called Sunrise to Sunset, and the other one is called Meadowlark. And both feature different kinds of indigenous style songs. So I'd like to talk about the different kinds of songs that I make and maybe give you a chance to, throughout this presentation, uh, write some lyrics of your own and share them with me if you'd like. And we can work on a, maybe making a round dance song. I'll explain what a round dance song is. And um, also I would like to share the meanings of songs for me, um, different songs that I've made and why um, I wrote them, the purpose or how they came, the song came to me, stuff like that. And then also throughout, I will share some personal stories about my singing journey and 
recording journeys, stuff like that. So yeah, if you're interested in listening to my music, the link is in the chat to my Bandcamp website. Thanks, Clementine. And I also have a website too. You just go to www.tianaspottedthunder.com and you'll get the links to all of uh, my streaming services. So yeah, I will um, get started. So when I was talking about there's different kinds of songs, um, the first kind of song that I started singing was hand games. And if you don't know what hand games are, it's like you have sticks. So I'm gonna use these pens as an example. So um, they kind of count as points. There's five per team. Each team has five sticks like this. And then there's one in the middle that's kind of like the, uh, the main stick that's like hidden throughout the game. And then you sing throughout passing the, the sticks back and forth as you make points or lose points. And then at the very end, if you still have this and you win all the sticks or if they get all your sticks and you're the team that has this then you give up that stick then you win so throughout the game um you're singing as you're hiding these bones i don't have a bone but i just imagine like these two right here you just like switch them around in your hands you hide them behind your back and then uh someone on the other side the other team is is kind of like watching you like Maybe you're like looking at one of your hands or, you know, shaking one of your legs or, you know, you're just kind of like fidgeting in some way and they try to guess uh, you. And if they guess the right one, let's say this is the right one, then, you know, you give them up, you give your the bones back and then you don't get no chance to make points. But if they get this one on, you know, they get you wrong, then they have to give you a stick. Then you can do that again you hide again make more sticks keep singing and keep singing all the way until the very end and then you know by the time you lose your voice then maybe you would have won by then hopefully but yeah so that's hand games and um hand games was kind of my doorway into uh getting courage to uh you know sing by myself sing uh loud and proud and um it got me a lot out of my shell so how it started is i joined my my high school's hand game club and we were playing and learning the songs our coach was pretty tough on us to make sure we we sing everybody sings no matter what and i was thinking well i don't know i don't know if i can sing like that and um so i just kept going over it get, you know, getting used to it. And then the time came when we really did have to sing and I had to start the songs off. And then the other girls uh, were singing along with me, but um, that's when I got the courage to start singing more out there. And um, the, the singing um, has really made me a lot of friends, traveling for hand game tournaments all over. And, um, there's these two girls that I wanted them to sing with me on, on Metalwork on my last album. And they sing really well. And, uh, you know, they have the same kind of spunk in their voice. You know, they're just, uh, they're just really awesome, awesome singers. And their names are Jesslyn and Jocelyn. And um, so I invited them to record with me so I was teaching them a song that I wanted them to sing and and uh, they were like oh this song's pretty tricky and it kind of like alternated like different vocables syllables within the song so um, they you know they're kind of having a hard time a little bit learning it for me I made the song so it was like well it just kind of flowed just right for me and I didn't even think about that but yeah, the song is called Tricky for that reason. And it's just like a kind of like a teeter totter song. You just alternate the little syllables inside. And um, that's really all that makes the song is just the same melody over and over. And then it's like, it's just what is to me, it's easy. But if you can learn it 
and it'd be a good song for you to to sing if you play hand games. So I'll sing that song for you guys first. tricky well I don't know if it's actually tricky it is tricky but that song's called tricky <laughs> and um yeah so that is what a hand game song is but next I'd like to um explain a hand game song that I wrote with words and I don't know if any of you are um familiar with poetry and stuff like that. Um, I, I used to write a lot of poetry in high school. And so I wrote this little poem kind of song lyric. It's, it's short. And I started playing on my keyboard one day to, to um, kind of see if it would go with the words that I made. And the song is called Starboy. It's on the first album, Sunrise to Sunset. So I thought of, uh, you know, like switching up the style just to make it a little unique. That be a step up from like a regular hand game song. This is more like for easy listening and not really sung live too much at a, at a hand game tournament, but um or while playing. I just thought of it as something fun for everybody to listen to. And um, it, it incorporates cultural teachings of the spirits that are within the, the Milky Way. And the, the Milky Way in Lakota is Wanahi Tachanku. So that's the road where all the spirits are. And um, I thought I would share a little bit of that while making it sound like um, kind of like a love song. So yeah, I'll share that song with you guys too. <clears throat> When I wished upon a star Ask for love and there you are. I could not believe my eyes when your star gaze met with mine. When you walked into my life. A miracle gave me light, guided by the Milky Way. I'm thankful for you every day. That's another fun way to, to write music. And um, 
just taking little bits of words, little tiny snippets of a poem, however you see fit, um, you can make a song out of it, really. And um, so, like, that's pretty much how I write my round dance songs. And if um, you guys are familiar with round dance songs, they particularly have lyrics that are almost like love songs or something humorous, something meaningful. And so I'd like to share about the process of writing a round dance song. Um, well, I guess I'll share about how I composed a certain one. And then you can manipulate the, the vocables and the words, however you, you feel. And yeah. So uh, I really enjoyed making songs with words. I like uh, songs with words. They have like a little bit of meaning to them. There's songs with words, songs without words. Um, vocables, they're kind of like the syllables that go in the song, like the ways, yas, yos, whatever. And and uh, then you you would compose a melody, uh, fitting those syllables in there, and then you would also do the same thing by fitting the syllables of the round dance song, um, and kind of making the melody flow with the the lyrics. So yeah, um, I like this song particularly because um, it's, I guess it's a, it's just more of a poetic uh, vision for me to uh, kind of like explain um, a mentality of Lakota culture and uh, also kind of be able to apply it to many aspects of your life. This song I sing a lot because um, I'm still mourning some people in my life that I miss a lot. And I'm sure a lot of us have that, that um, in our lives where we miss somebody. So the song's called Doksha Ake. Doksha Ake means later again in Lakota. And I wanted to kind of model this song off of a uh, our old time songs they're called rabbit dance songs and they're they're like our our uh uh our form of a round dance and they have sometimes uh all lakota words or sometimes they'll do like half lakota half english words and i, I wanted to play around with this to make it like like that part lakota part english so the words are Chante uh, mashiche, that means I'm sad. And ohinya chante o chignake, that means I'll forever hold you in my heart. Doksha ke, later again. And I will miss you until we meet again in English. So <clears throat> you can apply this to any aspect of your life, but if you knew, if you uh, know some of your language, you can you can do that too with your songs and you can uh, make them all English too. So it's up to you. And uh, I can sing that one next. And the, the beat, I think it, the beat is like, is like this, it's like. So I can go like this while I'm singing and you'll understand the beat that goes with it and then how the ending goes is hey oh hey oh hey oh and so that's the ending that usually round dance songs have <clears throat> so yeah i will sing that i'll sing doksha okay and that song is on metal arc as well <clears throat> Oh, hey, hi, oh, hey, hi, oh, hey. 
song and for uh, those also um, just uh, learning how to sing especially our, our Lakota young women um, we don't usually use a drum when we sing we don't usually touch them and uh, there's many reasons and stories as to why but uh, I believe that our voice most resonates uh, a cappella or um, behind the men singing or with a rattle. So I always use rattle. This is the one I'm using today. It's a little egg. I like it. I usually use this just for hand game songs. So yeah. And then of course I was making my beat with these pens, <laughs> just improvising. But yeah, I am um you know very uh in much into powwows and i enjoy singing back up i enjoy singing behind the drum behind the men and and um echoing their their uh vocals in a higher tone and that's how you uh say it's we chaglata we chaglata is is the word for the backup singer and it's a highly revered position in society to be able to, to um, do that. It takes a lot of courage to sing back up behind a drum group. And um, it took me a while because of my shyness. My level of shyness was unbelievable. I could, I could not like get myself to go up to people and meet them. I was pretty reclusive as far as making my way in society, in public places. I stayed home a lot. So uh, getting myself out there and getting the courage and and um, the interest to sing like that is, is um, pretty amazing to me. But if you feel the, re the, the want to do that, there's good ways to do that. And one way is take on a mentor that also sings. And also uh, invite your friends to uh, do this with you, learn along with you. I learned alongside a few of my friends and I took on mentors as well. So having that peer support as well as the mentor support is really helpful. So uh, don't be afraid to reach out to people and don't be afraid to get your friend group excited about something or find a friend group that that does practice uh singing and and get together 
And that's what it took for me. It took me finding a group of friends that love to sing. And we just sang all the time. So that was uh, one of the, the coolest things is having encouraging people um, to, you know, help you along, especially when you're all learning together. Tiana, um, can you hear me? I'm having some issues with my internet, but um, can you talk a little bit more about your mentorship and who some of your mentors are and how you approach them to help you on your singing, singing yeah. journey? Yeah, definitely. I can talk a little bit about that. So um, first of all, I kind of watched by example. And I went off of uh, what my late father was telling me about singing. He really wanted me to sing. So um, he introduced me to some women who sing that he really enjoys their singing. And one was Cheryl Between Lodges, Two Bulls, and another one was Sissy Goodhouse. And I really enjoyed them because they had the courage to stand alone and uh, sing a song, just belt out the song with the drum group and uh, just, you know, just do it like nothing, just natural. Even if they didn't know the song, they said, you know, they, they would just learn it right there. And I thought that was the most awesome thing just to see that, just to watch them, watch them do that. And then when they would invite me to stand by them, I was way too scared to sing with them, but, Eventually I did. Eventually I, I got the courage and another uh, amazing singer that I watched was her name was uh, Joyce Eaglehawk and she sings with the Crazy Horse Singers. I really enjoy her voice as well and I watched her and she invited me to uh, some of the singing that they did at their home with the, the Crazy Horse Singers and you know, I, I would learn the songs and try and sing with them too. That was when I was a teenager. And uh, eventually I broke out of that shell and found uh, some other uh, mentor singer ladies that that uh, really helped me along too. And one of them, uh, the most, most significant one I could say is Jenny Lee Rooks. And she was, she's just so awesome and kind and caring and explained so much to me about songs, explain uh, purpose and reasons for songs and how the beat goes and uh, when to stop, stuff like that. So um, I really want well, to thank Jenny Lee a lot for, for doing that. And she was at a lot of the same powwows that I would go to and I'd meet up with her and sing with the, the drum group she sang with, and she was really welcoming to me. So, yeah, I think she is one of the more formative uh, mentors in my youth. And um, what that meant for me was that I felt welcomed. I felt welcome in the space, spaces that I was singing at, even um, when we played hand games. The, when I first met Jenny Lee, I was starting to lose my voice and I, I was getting nervous because her her hand game team I was playing against, I kind of idolized them. And uh, they they traveled around everywhere. The, the women that all sang on that hand game team had beautiful voices and they all sang and, and they have an album out and everything like that. So I was super intimidated by them when we were playing against them. So when, I, when I'd stop singing, then uh, Jenny Lee would say, no, don't stop singing, keep singing. <laughs> and I would try to take a drink of my drink or my water and try and like, you know, keep singing again. <laughs> But my heart was racing because I was like, what if we lose to them? Or I bet we're going to lose. I, you know, like um, they're like, like pro hand game people. And then they sing at powwows. These ladies are awesome. And, and I don't know. Uh, I don't I probably don't sing that good and all that. And but, you know, they really encouraged me to keep singing the whole time, the whole game every time we were hiding the bones so then on we we kind of made our connection and and she 
really, um, you know, did a lot for me after that, helped me a lot, encouraged me a lot. So having somebody like that, like just one person to just um, be the one that you kind of like use as a support um, really helps. Even if you don't talk to them every day, even if you don't see them all the time, you just think of them and you think of that, well, they said I could do it and they told me to keep singing. So I'm going to do it. And it really helped me. It really helped me because every time it's like, well, I'll see you at this one. I'll see you at that, that hand game. I'll see you at that powwow and, and stuff like that. So yeah, that's, that was the meaning of mentorship for me. <clears throat> and so I was just talking about round dance songs and a lot of round dance songs have different kinds of lyrics. So um, imagine like somebody, imagine a person and imagine um, like what you think of them. So a lot of round dance songs have words about um, how they make you feel. Um, imagine your life together and stuff like that. So you think of wanting to be with them forever. You wanna, um, you know, thinking about you all the time and stuff like that. Those are fun little lyrics you can use to make a round dance song. And you can totally make the song as unique as you want. Um, you know, I miss you every day. Hope one day we will get back together or something, you know, whatever you feel about this person, you can totally write about that. And if you feel like putting some little lyrics in the chat, that that would be awesome. Um, it's always a start, just kind of free writing something. Think of something that you can uh, like just right off the top of your head. Think of your person. And <clears throat> so I, I, I think of that. And um, there's another kind of song that I wanted to share too. So, um, and you think of, yeah, I was just, we were just talking about mentors. Um, there's all kinds of mentors for everything in your life. And one, one role model for me was, well, is still my grandma. And uh, she's a, a just, relative grandma but nonetheless she's still my grandma and the first year of our Sundance I think the first couple of years she helped out uh, cooking most of the time there and I seen her um, cooking big pots of soup on open fire in 90 degree weather and uh, we were there right with her and helping haul water um, quarter mile you know, there and back. So basically half mile with a big old orange jug of water doing things for her, getting her stuff and making food with her. And I was just young, like nine, 10 years old. Uh, I always think of those moments with her though, watching her do that. And she was just so stern with it. So, uh, you know, it's almost like, like her sign of strength being able to, to cook outside like that. And I wanted to be that strong too. Like I wanted to, you know, be just like that. So eventually um, I did start taking on little things that she did here and there and thinking about her. And I think, oh, I should do that now. It's about my time to start doing these things. And um, she fought in AIM um, during the Wounded Knee occupation and she even was at the very last stand in Standing Rock with the uh, Keystone XL pipeline protest there. So um, in the middle of, of this um, big movement that was happening at Standing Rock, I decided to make a song dedicated to our grandmother Earth. Our grandmother Earth 
is the one who provides us this water of life. And I thought of that, you know, I thought of, we need to stand for, for our grandmothers. We need, you know, she is our grandmother, our earth. We need to, we need to defend her. And that's the song I made called Unchi Song. When I finished making this song, I called my dad. I was on the road and just by myself, just singing that song over and over. I thought I'd show him. And I said, do you, do you like these lyrics, dad? I'd always get his approval on my, on my songs that are in Lakota because he's a fluent speaker. And he's like, yeah, that's a good song. Yeah. Oh, and, and you know what? Speaking of that, you know, your grandma, Regina, she was arrested. She was, she's in jail. She was arrested yesterday. <laughs> and I thought, what, <laughs> what, what? She was up there. <laughs> said, oh my gosh, she's, oh my gosh, she's so old now. What is she doing over there? So yeah, she was over there and um, they started taking everybody off the camp. Everybody was supposed to leave and she didn't want to budge. Here they arrested her. And then sure enough, Sure enough, she was um, in headlines everywhere after that. And I knew then that wasn't a coincidence that I happened to finish that song at the time she was arrested. So I decided to dedicate this song to her. And um, the more meaningful I make these songs, I just feel like they can be used for uh, other people. Maybe this is meaningful for others as well others who are defending our grandmother earth everywhere all over this world everybody's um trying to uh, defend the the causes that will um you know defeat our grandmother and hurt her so i would like to share that song with you guys and uh, Clementine, she shared in the chat the news article about my grandma being uh, arrested. And um, yeah, Grandma Regina, she's, she's awesome. She's just, she's everyone's grandma. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just awesome. Like, yeah, that's my grandma. And then, you know, I meet somebody else. Oh, yeah, that's grandma. That's Grandma Regina. <laughs> And so, yeah, I, I gave her the CD and I told her that the song was about her. I visit her on her porch in Oglala. We visited for a long time. It, you know, with COVID and everything, I didn't want to go in her house. So I just, I stood at a distance and visited her for a while. And, and I really hope she liked the CD. I didn't get to talk to her since then. And hopefully she likes her song. But yeah, I'll, I'll sing this song for you guys. It means, um, <clears throat> so Grandmother Earth, Unchimaka, that's uh, Grandmother Earth, I cherish you. And we choni my makue, like you give me life. And um, ohinia, I'll, Basically, always, you know, um, I will always stand with my grandmothers. I didn't get to fit Ohinia right in the melody because that's where I kind of had to make the uh, adjustment. But yeah, that that is it. Unchi um, na I stand with my grandmothers. <clears throat> Oh, hi, 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 hi,
a really emotional song for me but it's one of the songs that helps me to stay strong and be be like our grandmothers especially grandma regina and um that's another kind of song that's an honor song the lakota people we have all kinds of songs for all kinds of purposes in life and for many reasons we have uh you know to express ourselves through song so the the term for that is called ichi oloa ichi oloa is kind of like, oloa is song and uh ichi oloa is is using your voice and song for your emotions. And um, that's one of the most beautiful thing uh, being a Lakota person is that you have that freedom of expression with your voice. You send your voice out into the universe and you let the world know, you let the universe know how you're feeling. You use that song for that purpose and you'd always express yourself with words talking one-on-one -on -one with somebody but you can use it for for your singing use that emotion for your voice use that emotion to make a song and that's why i uh i made that song i thought of it i thought of an emotion i had and there's there's all kinds of uh feelings that you have we have our love songs we have round dance songs we have hand game songs those are songs of you know uh playing playing a game having fun leisure then we have uh honor songs we have honor songs of all kinds all kinds and for any reason any occasion we'll have a song to help somebody and even a song to help ourselves which are encouragement songs, songs to help people. Um, so, so the songs that, that I just sang, you know, has a beat like, you could use a drum with it. Uh, if you use a drum, you know, you could sing with a, a drum group. You can sing it on a hand drum by yourself, however you feel with that beat. And, um, from the teachings that I've received uh, through different different mentors and different teachers in my life, different people in my family, I put together a song that's for you, for yourself. You can encourage yourself sometimes when you're alone. Um, even our people have ceremonies that you're alone. So the women have our our uh, womanhood ceremony, and um, that's called Ishnachi Ishnati Awi Chalawampi. That means they sing over her while she's in her lodge alone, and that's our our ceremony of womanhood for us girls. And then there's also the Hambalecha. That's a uh, crying for a vision. And men typically did that, and still do. We still do these ceremonies. But 
Um, there are times in this world today, in our daily lives, we're alone. Maybe we need to encourage ourselves to keep going in, in one way or another. And the words of this song are, on this day, I will paint myself red, dance and pray. I want to live the Lakota way of life so that the people may live. And the key term I have for this song is called Shaichya, to make yourself red. In today's world, we um, alternate our lives according to this new world. We can't be fully Lakota. We can't fully live out our way of life because of the things we have to do. We have to work, provide for our families. We have to go to the store. We have to drive a car. We have to speak English and stuff like that. But we do have our ceremonies. We do have our culture. And in those times, we shaijia. We make ourselves red. So in, that, in those times, you know, you think of it, oh, well, why do I practice these ways? Why do I practice my culture? Why do I practice these ceremonies? And it's because it's what got us here today. It's the prayers of our loved ones. It's the prayers of our ancestors and their willingness to pass this on. If it was if it wasn't good for our people, they wouldn't have passed it on and kept it alive for us. So that's what I think of. It's um, our, that our culture, our way of life, it's our livelihood. It, what, it's what keeps us going as Lakota people, as proud people. And um, there's a huge, huge story that I put in just four minutes. <laughs> on a, a song and it's called dancer's prayer so however you dance however you walk your life you remember your lakota and you sing this song to yourself remember and remind yourself that this is why you do things and why you are so proud to be lakota so i will share dancer's prayer with you Hey, hey, Chewa ki e ya he ya, wa koi chok 
ki ogna wani wachi e he che o ya de ki ni pik de hai I love that song because um, when I first sang, sang it, I was like thinking like, hmm, I don't know if I'm like experienced enough in my language to kind of like have these lyrics, but I, I had them looked at. And um, of course I sing them to my dad, I sing the song to my dad and he enjoyed the song and I decided to record it. I'll do a little video recording, maybe put it on Facebook, put it on YouTube or, or whatever. But when I sing it, I looked behind me um, when I was watching it and these little orbs, like swirling orbs were coming. They were just swirling and going like this and dancing around. It was awesome. Like it kind of freaked me out because I was like, wow, I'm not alone. <laughs> I wasn't home alone. <laughs> and so, I, you know, I smudged off and I thought about it and I thought, wow, well, maybe they liked it. Maybe that brought them. Maybe they were like drawn to it, drawn to the, the song, the words. So that's why I, I felt like there's a spiritual connection for me with that song. It wasn't a coincidence that that out of the blue, I came up with these lyrics out of the blue. I, I thought of of this song and, and the purpose for me. And that's why I wanted so badly to, to share it with you all. So that song is on Meadowlark. You can look that up to stream it too. And, uh, you know, just to encourage everybody, everybody wanting to learn to their culture, everybody learning to sing everybody struggling to uh, you find their indigenous or Lakota identity and where you fit in. It's not about fitting in. It's about doing that for yourself and creating a relationship with the greater universe. There's a whole universe of ancestors and spirits and stars. And um, even within the earth, there's a whole bunch of people, spirits, beings cheering you on to learn these ways, practice these ways, live this way every day. And whether uh, it's by singing, whether it's by going to a ceremony, whether it's learning your language, going to powwows, um, anything, playing hand games, you are making somebody out there in this universe proud. And they don't have to be living on this earth, but it like the, the sign that I got from Dancer's Prayer, it was enough for me to show me that, wow, somebody's like, like proud of this song. They like this song, like they connected with it somehow. So the, the, these relatives showed up, these beings showed up, but um, however you see yourself in this world, um, by living out your indigenous way of life, make sure to remember that in times that you want to give up. And for us living in two worlds, it's a, it's a huge battle that we take on, but it's worth it. And it keeps me going. And so many of us that practice these ways, so many of us that that teach others. So many of us that are young learning, it, it's worth it. And um, to make your own songs, learn these songs, practice them, write your own, put out your own album, set an example. Imagine somebody else learning their culture because they heard you, they heard you sing. And they're like, wow, if he or she is singing, I think I should sing too. Maybe I can. And then they do the same thing. They go and 
put out their own music and their own recordings out or make their own songs. They are out there singing and somebody else hears it and they're like, hey, that one's singing. Maybe I should sing too. And then realize that talents are like hidden a lot of the time. And it's like, you never know. You never know where you take your hobby or you take something that you were scared to do and then it just takes off like you just keep doing it doing it you get better and better and you get more excited about it and it becomes your way of life singing is my way of life because i use it like ichi oloa i use that for everything every emotion i have in my life everything i do there's a song to it and it is an honor to share this these little pieces of my life with you and this journey of my singing and i'm i'm just hoping that by sharing that i am able to be that person for somebody else that says well she sings so i want to i want to try it out i want to try singing i want to try playing hand games i want to try going to powwows and being a backup singer too and if you happen to see me out there just let me know and I'll help you. So um, I guess that's pretty much all I had to share with you all, unless there's any questions. But um, I really enjoyed this, these moments with you all, this time and the space that we shared. And for all the future viewers, I really thank you for watching as well. Thank you, Tiana. And if uh, folks want to share some affirmations in the chat, that would be really great. Um, this is I this hour went by so quick and I could listen to you for another hour. I really enjoyed um, hearing your your talking about the lyrics and sharing the songs. It was really, really powerful and really beautiful. So just thank you so much. Yeah, I really enjoyed it, too, because um, I just, I didn't think that, um, you know, I, I could write that in my CD little binder thing, like each little thing, there's a big story behind every song and you don't think it's three minutes, but then there's like a whole 20 minutes I can talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to hear those more stories, but, um, <laughs> and I don't, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but just again, thank you. Um, for sharing with Racing Magpie and like like uh, we said this will be up on our YouTube page and we'll be able to share it out with other folks to to participate and I'm thinking about my round dance songs um, and thinking about who I would write those songs about so I really appreciate um, that and yeah if there's nothing else we can end the meeting and we will talk with each other later okay Thank you again so much. And I'd like to say again, Doksha okay later again. Now, if you didn't know that before, that's that's the way you say goodbye in Lakota. So now you know if you're just learning. Thank you all again. Thank you. Doksha okay. Oh, Doksha.